Say, 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 we welcome, we welcome you. We welcome you. We
from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to each and every one of you. We thank you for joining us on another Sunday morning here at First Baptist Bridgehampton. And on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Tisha Williams, we thank God for each and every one of you, our Bridge Nation family, and we thank you for our friends and family far and near for joining us in another Sunday morning worship. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our God and our King, God of heaven and earth, creator of all things, both great and small, Lord, we come before your most holy and sovereign throne of grace on another early morning prayer, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for giving us this day we thank you, Lord, for giving us another day of worship. And to you, dear Lord, we give all the praise and the glory and the honor that is due unto your holy and righteous name. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for being King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all your many blessings, all your uncountable blessings to these, your children, new mercies each day we thank you lord and heavenly father lord god of all things we pray for more love and more peace more joy and more happiness among these your people heavenly father to be present in our homes in our hearts and in this nation heavenly father bless this land lord. help us dear father let your Holy Spirit dwell in the hearts and minds and souls of these, your people. And Lord, give us the strength, dear Lord, where we are weak. For you, O oh Lord, are the strength of our lives. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. When we are weak, thou art strong. And we thank you, Lord. And Lord, be with us. Be with us, Lord. Keep us, Heavenly Father. Keep your loving arms around us. Be a hedge about us, Heavenly Father. Be a fence around us, Heavenly Father. Lead, guide, and protect us, Lord, as we travel along this wilderness journey. Be with us, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you be with our angel of this house, Heavenly Father, the Reverend Tisha Williams. We ask that you bless her and keep her and watch over her with your own eye, Heavenly Father. Bless and keep her, Heavenly Father, and even her husband, Deacon Williams, Heavenly Father. We ask that you be with him, Heavenly Father. Watch over and keep him, Lord, with your loving kindness and your tender mercies. And Lord, we ask that you be with us all as we continue to walk this faith journey. Be with us, Lord, this day and even forevermore. And we ask all these blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the people of God said amen and amen and amen. Thank you. 
We thank the Lord today for what the Lord is doing in this building, and we give God praise for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, to everybody that's listening under the sound of my voice, good morning, good morning, good morning, Bridge Nation, good morning, First Baptist, good morning to the listeners near and far. There is a word of the Lord that is going to come directly to you, and I am so elated that you are here with me today. We give honor to God who is the head of everything, and we thank Thank God for the great pastor of this house, my big sister. We thank God for the opportunity. We thank God for the speedy recovery and the blessings and the miracle for Deacon Williams. And we thank God for everything that God is doing for his people today. Listen, I want you to grab your Bibles, if you will, and meet me in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and find me at the verse 9 and 10. Very familiar passage of scripture. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 through 10. And you have these words, it says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. If I were to pin this sermon with the title, it would simply be this, Grace, Let Me Carry It. Grace, Let Me Carry It. Now, Father, have your way. Do what I can't do. Speak how I can't speak. Move how only you can. Deliver who you want to deliver. Set free who you want to set free. And I'll be so careful to give your name glory. Grace, Let Me Carry It. August Augie Pullman is a 10-year-old boy living in a brownstone in Brooklyn with his mother, Isabel, father, Nate, older sister, Vaya, and dog, Daisy. He was born with a rare medical facial deformity and has undergone 27 different surgeries in order to see, smell, speak, and hear. Augie has been homeschooled, but as he approaches the fifth grade, his parents decide to enroll him in Beecher Prep, a private school. Before the school year begins, Augie meets with a Miss, Mr. Tushman, the principal, who arranges a tour for him with three other students. Watch this, Jack, Jillian, and Charlotte. When school starts, Augie is ostracized, but soon forms a close friendship with Jack. Throughout the entire movie, Augie has to carry the same deformity that causes him at times to fight with the question, why won't this go away? It's something he didn't ask for, but something he can't shake. Augie does not get the luxury of removing the thing that makes bullies pick on him. Uh, people avoid him and even his, only fa his own family overlook him. However, it is the same thing that causes him to develop close friendships, bring his family closer, and even cause him to receive the award of the year at the end of the movie. One of the end, one of the end it was a struggle, uh, but on the other end, he was graced to carry the hard thing. Can I say that to you again on one end it was a struggle but on the other end he was graced to carry the hard thing taking this amazing movie entitled wonder into consideration immediately I heard the spirit of God say to tell my people this morning that I've graced you to carry it I've graced you you may say well what is my it Dr. Wilkins I've graced you to carry the pain I've graced you to carry the struggle I've graced you to carry battles I've graced you to carry loss I've graced you to carry sickness. I've graced you to carry your proclivity and everything in between. God has graced me to carry it. If I were to encourage you in this virtual world, I would tell you to type it right there in the comments and say, God grace me to carry it. If there's anything that I can praise God for today, and that you could praise God for today. It's simply this. It's knowing that his grace is not something that's just in place for my mess ups, but it's also in place for me not to lose my momentum. Can I say that again? Grace is not in place just for your mess ups, but it's in place for your momentum. Would you just holler at somebody in your house, in your car, on your social media device and tell them grace, let me carry it. Now watch this. Grace is a is mentioned a total total of 668 times in the Bible. In the King James translation, uh, uh, when uh, it's translated, grace is translated 38 times, favor, 26 times, twice as gracious, one as pleasant, and once as precious. There are four types of grace. Watch this, sanctifying grace, which allows us to always remain in communion with God. Watch this, actual grace, which is God's intervention, sacramental grace, which is a 
a gift given to the believer and the grace of the Holy Spirit. No matter the type of grace, the recurring theme is the fact that God is found at the center of this thing that we call grace. Today, my job is to coach you into a place of reflective praise that understands that you have been graced to carry the hard thing. Grace is not something that we manipulate God to release, but rather something that is already manufactured into the equation of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Second Timothy 1 and 9 shed some valuable light on this topic when it says he has saved us and called us to live a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Would you remind someone in your house that you entered the world with grace? God knew we would need something to sustain us beyond our stupidity. Can I say that again? God knew we would need something that would sustain us beyond our stupidity. Now you may say, Dr. Wilkins, that's a real harsh word, but can I be honest and keep it a buck with you? We've made some stupid decisions. We've gone some stupid places. We've thought some stupid things and grace had to pull us out of our stupor. Grace had to pull us out of this foolish behavior that we thought made sense. Cover us in the midst of our conflict and bind us in the midst of our behavior. It's called grace. All throughout the Bible, we see God gracing people to carry the hard thing. You don't believe me? God's grace infused Noah according to Genesis 6 and 8. God's grace overpowered Abraham and Sarah's thus belief. Genesis 12 and 3. God's grace preserved Joseph according to Genesis 50 and 20. God's grace covered Moses' doubt according to Exodus 4 and 13. And God's grace saved Rahab according to Joshua 2 and 11. It is evident that God's grace can let you carry the hard thing. The moment you realize that God is gracious because he is God, you will stop trying to overwork yourself to get in good with God's grace. Your behavior is not what gets you in good with God, but it's your faith in the grace of God that gets you in right standing. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It it is by grace that you have been saved. That's what our good Bible says. But what do you do when what God, when God's grace uh, won't remove the hard thing? You find in this familiar passage that the Apostle Paul is describing in one of his letters an encounter he has in the realm of the spirit and explains how a thorn was given to him in his flesh from Satan to buffet him. In English terms, it's as if Paul has this never ending itch that just won't go away. But it needs to be clear that the reason that the thorn is given is so that the closeness with God and his revelations does not go to Paul's head. Paul asked God not once, not twice, but three times to remove the thorn. There are moments when God will allow a struggle or a fight or an infirmity to remain, to remain mind you just how much you have to depend on him. Sometimes deliverance is the easy way. If he frees you too quickly you might let status and clout and influence go to your head. So what God does is he factors in a fight in the midst of your faith. Every time Paul would ask for deliverance, God would respond with sufficient. Paul wanted a breakthrough, but God gave him sufficient. Paul wanted healing, but God gave him sufficient. Paul wanted it broken, but God gave him sufficient. Sufficient by definition is something that is more than enough. Just tell yourself, I've got sufficiency. I've got more than what I need to make it through this. The grace of God is sufficient to meet every area of my life. The situations in our lives keep changing, but we can be assured that God's grace is sufficient. Yeah, every situation may change, but he's sufficient. When we are on the mountain, we will have the grace to be humble. When we were in the valley, God gave us the grace to not get discouraged. When we were in a pandemic, God gave us grace to keep persevering. Whatever the situation was, the grace of God 
God was always sufficient. The grace of God is sufficient for your children. The grace of God is sufficient on your life. The grace of God is sufficient in your job and you have had the grace to carry it. So if there is a message that I would leave you with today, it would simply be this. You've been graced to carry the hard thing. You may say, well, when is this thing going to end? There's going to be a day where God cracks the sky and the Lord Jesus comes and he gets his servants out of here. You won't have to suffer long, but grace has to carry you there. You won't be sick forever, but you've got to have the grace to carry it right now. I know it doesn't feel comfortable, but you've got to have the grace to do it. I know it goes all whack, but you've got to have the grace to carry it. If you are wondering today how I can maneuver, God says to tell you today this maneuver with my grace. Stop trying to figure it out because I've already worked it out. My grace is sufficient. Grace. Grace. Grace to carry the hard thing. Grace to cover the struggle. Grace to carry the hardship. Grace to navigate through family issues. Whatever it is, I need you to understand this situation that he graced you to carry it. Why did he pick me? Because he, he, knew, he knew that grace would get me through. You don't believe me? Come here, Job. Have you considered my servant, Job? So the next time you want to complain about the infirmity, the next time you want to complain about the sickness, the next time you want to complain about the pandemic, the next time you want to complain about the job, about the trial, about the trauma, about the issue, just know this one thing, that his grace is sufficient. And believe it or not, you have been graced to carry the hard thing. Be blessed and operate in the grace of God. I love you with the love of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Listen, I need you to understand something that you may be saying, listen, I'm trying to identify this thing and I'm trying to get back on track with God. I'm trying to get back in alignment. If that's you, I just need you to go ahead and type on social media, YouTube, The Bridge Nation. That's me. You may say, listen, I want to get saved. I want to rededicate my life. I've had a struggle. I've had a stronghold that I can't break. I've come to tell you, guess what? The, safety, the sanctification, excuse me, and the salvation plan of God includes grace. He knows you're going to mess up. He factored it in. The Bible says where there's grace that it is, does it mean that we keep on sinning? Absolutely not. But his grace is sufficient. So come on to the fold. Come on, not just the bridge nation, not just join the church, but join a family of individuals who are dysfunctional by nature. We are sinners by nature, but we are saved by grace. So listen, I want to encourage you. If you want to get saved, if you want to rededicate, I want you to do that. Listen, those that may give, listen, let me help you understand something. You have the opportunity to sow. You have the opportunity to say, I listen, I believe in this vision and I'm going to give into this. There are so many different ways electronically that you can support the Bridge Nation and First Baptist Church of Bridgehampton. Wherever this vision may go, you say, I'm going with it and grace is going to get me there. I thank God for your life. I thank God that you're now saved. Guess what? Right in your home, even in a virtual worship setting, you are saved. So let me pray for you real quick. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this woman. I thank you for this man. I thank you for this boy or this girl that's on the other side of this screen. I thank you, God, that now even in this virtual world, there's still victory for those that are not saved. God, offer salvation to someone today. Deliver someone. Free someone. Restore someone's hope in you. God, I pray, God, that you unify and knit us together perfectly according to your grace. And I thank you that your grace is sufficient. Thank you that the same grace that covered your servants then will cover us now and forevermore. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen. Just know that grace got you through it. Have a blessed Sunday. <laughs>